live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks. We do Hadoop and Wham Disco. Hadoop made invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon. And this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's been here all week. Big Data NYC, our event. Uh, we're at the Warwick Hotel right across the street from the Hilton. And of course, the Hilton Hadoop world has been going on, uh, StratiConf. This is our fourth year covering this event. Uh, we have some great sponsors. And um, one of them is here right now, Hadapt. Uh, Chris Rocca is here. He's the Vice President of Engineering. And he's here with Patrick Toole. Uh, Hadapt is a company that we've uh, been following for quite some time, Cambridge Mass based. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, good to so be here. So how's the show going for you? Oh, it's been great. It's been uh, super busy. It's amazing how much momentum uh, you know, you're seeing. It was packed. I don't think I had a spare five minutes you know, in the last two days. So what's the, uh, what are the conversations like at the booth? First of all, people trying to understand sort of what, what you guys do, right? So what do you tell them? So tell us about Hadapt. Where do you fit in this whole yep. thing? We know well, you're I doing think, SQL um, for Hadoop, but... People are really trying to tease apart the ecosystem and understand where all the pieces fit together. You're definitely seeing a lot of uh, kind of spot solutions, you know, not necessarily an overall, uh, you know, integrated story that people can really get their heads around. So it's a lot of just uh, explaining the basics, uh, helping people understand where we fit in, the set of problems we solve, you know, and, and how we're closing some of the gaps that are, that are sort of plaguing people trying to put together a real end-to-end -to -end solution. Okay, so, so when they say to you, they come to your booth, they go, I've heard of Adapt, I know you're doing some stuff with SQL. What, what, what do you do? Uh, uh, fundamentally, we are a SQL database on Hadoop. You know, we allow people to load their data onto the cluster, query the data, do analytics, all through a SQL interface. But you're really good, if I understand it, at, at handling just diverse data, tool sets, and making it available for sort of everyday SQL programmers. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely correct. I mean, a core vision of the company is we don't want to force people to resort to MapReduce jobs or scripting or, or Java by hand, right? What we want to do is make all the power of the Hadoop cluster available through SQL directly. So talk about the architecture and how that differs from um, sort of other platforms out there. Sure. I think, um, you know, you really have to look at Hadapt as a, a clean, engineered, commercial piece of software. <laughs> robust SQL implementation on the front end, uh, a very flexible data architecture on the back end that allows us to plug in a number of different data sources, as well as clean APIs for integrating machine learning algorithms. Okay, so what's going on, Patrick, in the marketplace? You, you work with a lot of customers. Uh, and, uh, so, so talk about the sort of... Yeah, so we actually see um, sort of uh, kind of different types of uh, use cases that we run into. Most of the time that we're sort of seeing is that um, uh, with the whole splintering of the database market in general and uh, the explosion of the different data stores that are out there, they're really just looking to kind of unify a lot of these things together and trying to build something where they can put all the pieces together into one place and come up with one, one answer. And the biggest problem that we saw <clears throat> when we first got out in the market was we saw a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of people trying to glue the different pieces together, right? So you see them using sort of NoSQL databases, you see them using some of the MPP databases and Hadoop, right? And um, what we sort of found was that when you put all these pieces together, um, they have this sort of data joining problem, if you will, where, it's, where it becomes this massive ETL problem. And so where we've really begun to take a, a, a huge hold into the market is helping people kind of unify that into one place. So it's really looking at all the different types of information that are out there in one central place. Okay, so customer calls you in. Yep. Right, where do you start? Um, well, I mean, usually what we start doing is pulling apart their, their, uh, you know, their data life cycle. Where do they collect their data? Where do we put, um, you know, how are they monetizing it? In other words, how are they looking at it? How are they consuming the information that they have? Um, inevitably, what we find is that there is a data scale problem, right? And um, 
what we also find is that they're moving a lot of the data all over the place in order to come up with that, those answers that they need. So a lot of it comes into um, making sure we get the right technologies for them and being able to pull it apart and, and, and use it in a very unified manner. Um, so it could be very simply talking to um, you know, the, uh, the data analyst um, at a company and understanding what kind of analytics they're trying to get out of their information. Um, it, could look, uh, it can also be uh, talking to the IT professionals where they've actually had a huge, huge problem of trying to manage many of these systems and they're trying to glue it all together. So. Now, um, I wonder if you could share with us some of the, some of the more common use cases mm -hmm. and maybe even some of the harder to get to use cases. Sure. Um, so the, the common ones that we see sort of inevitably are, are things like uh, advertising uh, as well as um, uh, looking at uh, clickstream analysis um, and also being able to come up with um, insights into those pieces. Now, the, the harder ones to get to really are uh, the explosion of um, uh, sort of the, the machine learning type of algorithms where people are trying to put um, sort of uh, artificial intelligence into their analysis, right? Because there's so few people out there who know how to do that. So what ends up happening is um, we're able to actually bring some of those algorithms to the platform and execute them via SQL, right? And you know, we also tap into the existing community, right? So uh, the Mahout algorithms are out there, people are familiar with those. Um, uh, and we're able to actually leverage those and bring them to the data analyst and be able to let them run them from our platform. So those are harder because of the diversity or lack of skill sets, uh, combination? Uh, I would say it's just more of lack of knowledge of how to use them correctly is where it comes down to. It's, it's a lot harder uh, to take a, a set of URLs and say, how do I apply a clustering algorithm to it, right? It's, it's not as a well-known problem as sort of basic, you know, SQL and, and analytics has been for the past, you know, 40 years. So last year at Strata, you guys won uh, the old best in show, I guess I'd call it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it was, it, I think it coincided with the Impala announcement, didn't it? Did it not? From, uh, from Cloudera. It was very, yeah. very close. So that was good. Congratulations on that. Thank but a year later, uh, but so com compare and contrast, if you would, the, the difference between Hadapt and Impala. Uh, well, fundamentally, I mean, Hadapt is a, is a complete end-to-end -end platform, and we are backed by, you know, on-disk, you know, database management system, right? Our, our fundamental architecture allows us to scale out very wide, push queries down to the data nodes, get a lot of parallelism out of the cluster, deal with very large data sets, not limited to any kind of, you know, memory, memory scaling issue. Right, and so I think we're a, a broader, more robust solution. But I think you know it's interesting. There's a lot of talk about uh, SQL on Hadoop um, at the show, yeah. and, and it's sort of very noisy. And and it's I think that's one of the things to get back to your first question that I think was uh, maybe bringing people to the booth looking for clarity. And uh, I think I think where you'll see things going, and, and certainly we we have a good jump on it is you want to not just have sort of you know, basic SQL operations on normalized data. You really want a more flexible analytic platform where you can start to bring in data from, from some other sources. So Patrick managed clickstream analysis and typically you'd have a few uh, kind of normalized uh, columns inside your data source and then some big blob of, of semi-structured data. And uh, what, we're, what we're seeing in the market and what we're responding to is the need to be able to access that information directly through standard SQL as well. And it's a, it's a nice differentiator for us because instead of having people going through a complex ETL process, they can use SQL they know and love today, uh, you know, available through their BI tools to query on those uh, pieces of information that haven't been scrubbed and normalized before they're brought into the system. So you guys are one of the first to actually provide that, that, that SQL capability to That's this right. NoSQL environment. So how has that affected sort of adoption? I wonder if you could talk about where you guys are having success. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, uh, Generally speaking, I would say that uh, you know, SQL on Hadoop was sort of the, the first part of it, right? Um, and we sort of pushed past that with some of our you know, recent features and, and, and uh, some of the things that we're adding in terms of flexible uh, schema and in terms of uh, you know, machine learning algorithms and such. And so what we're sort of finding in terms of the adoption really is you know, databases have been around for a long time. So if you're going to bring SQL to the Hadoop platform, you need to have a reason, <laughs> right? And um, uh, you need to make sure that you maintain the flexibility and the algorithms and al you know that are out there, right? That are in, on the Hadoop platform and the MapReduce you know framework, um, and selectively 
uh, expand the scope, if you will, of structured databases, right? And make sure that you can bring features to, uh, to the users who like Hadoop and have, love the flexibility of it, um, and uh, you know, still be able to bring SQL to the, the larger masses who understand how to write the SQL queries. Um, so the adoption rate really is, is, that's where we're starting to see that, that mass adoption rate of it, is because of the SQL and being able to run the uh, additional algorithm. Are you seeing any particular industries that are, that are taking it up you know, faster than others, financial services, insurance? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, we absolutely see um, uh, quite a bit in the uh, in the advertising and uh, online retail. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, you mentioned clickstream analysis before, so you're seeing a lot of activity there. Yeah. So the clickstream analysis is is you know sort of uh, e-tailers, if you will, yeah. where they've got um, a, a massive, massive amount of data. So anything that's sort of online um, data collection is <laughs> very uh, comes very easily, right? And um, uh, they're the ones who are actually looking at uh, and sort of looking into that information and seeing what they can get out of that information quite a bit. So, so from Hadap's perspective, uh, uh, you know, maybe Chris, I'll start with you. Um, what, what would you say was the big takeaway of, of the event here? Uh, were you here last year? Uh, I wasn't actually here last okay, year. But, but so what's, what's the big takeaway this year for you? I, I think that really the, the takeaway is, um, you know, it's, it's becoming uh, busier, more confusing, uh, and, and there's a need for uh, a clarity about what the emerging architectures are for how applications are going to be pieced together, right? I think, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's clear, you know, individual siloed projects or, or point solutions, uh, you know, aren't giving people what they need, uh, you know, typical developers what they need to really put together something that's going to bring value to their business. Right, I think it's a, it's definitely a maturing of the overall space where you're going to see, you know, more co commercial offers, uh, frankly, that are that are providing a, a solution, right, not just pieces of technology. Anything you'd add, Patrick, to that? No, I think that's that's pretty fair. I'd say, uh, for me personally, it's it's neat to see how big it's grown and how it yeah. continues to grow, and and there's a lot of stuff out there. It's really kind of neat. So. It is neat. <laughs> it's our fourth year covering uh, covering this event, the Dupe World. A lot of good practitioners and. The New York crowd tends to be, uh, once they hop onto something, they tend to drive it pretty hard. So I'm sure you're hearing a lot from those guys. Um, all right, gentlemen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate your time, and uh, congratulations for all your success. Good luck going forward. All right, thank thanks. you. All right, everybody, keep it right there. We'll be back with John Furrier and Jeff Kelly to wrap from Big Data NYC. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back.